Returning to Source, Class 8, Crisis of Leisure and Savoring Life. Hello, I'm Jim Morningstar, your guide through this nine-class journey of Returning to Source. The eighth in our class series is entitled Crisis of Leisure and Savoring Life. Insights from the eighth or experientialistic level of the spiral dynamics model will help us prepare for exploring stages of consciousness on the cutting edge of human evolution. Part of our preparation for this evolution is fully owning our personal pyramid of happiness, learning to savor our life now. And we will practice this with exercises in basking, marveling, luxuriating, and gratitude. We will further expand the joy of reinforcing our signature strengths and embracing the fulfillment of knowing and living our purpose. Savoring life. Sustaining experientialistic consciousness requires conscious intention and practice. It also requires knowing what and how to practice and having priorities that are quite different than those dictated by survival fears. A simple way to look at the ordering of our time and priorities is graphically outlined by what is known as the pyramid of happiness. The base level of this pyramid is the time and energy we put into enjoying our physical existence. Joy is difficult to muster if I am in a continual mindset of struggle to survive and in pain. Struggle becomes a self-reinforcing cycle. The more I practice it, the more life seems to give me reason to. Shifting consciousness starts with the basic pleasures of being alive, even if I could at the same time be dealing with a chronic pain. Savoring is the awareness of pleasure and the deliberate conscious attention to the experience of pleasure. Savoring and mindfulness happen by sharing your pleasures with someone else, by taking mental photographs, by self-congratulation, by sharpening your perceptions, particularly using perspective shifting, and by absorption. In his book, Authentic Happiness, Marty Seligman, gives advice on orchestrating your pleasures to maximize your enjoyment and benefit from them. Habituation, that is, becoming routine and stale, can be countered by spacing your pleasures carefully and entering into a reciprocal surprise arrangement with a friend or lover. In other words, we can intelligently use these mental strategies to orchestrate our self-care to be a balanced base in our personal pyramid of happiness without devoting our life to materialism like an Epicurean or becoming obsessed like a hedonist. Now, many of us are in no danger of those extremes, but could use some coaching on relaxing into pleasure. Here, Seligman recommends four techniques for enhancing our savoring of the simple pleasures we do have. Basking taking time to let enjoyment sink in, giving thanks, expressing gratitude, marveling, enhancing the wonder of even the simplest pleasures, and luxuriating, consciously orchestrating pleasurable circumstances, are all means of amplifying pleasures. Now, take class eight, handout two, pleasures and gratifications, and complete section one, savoring life pleasures. Write one way you're willing to practice savoring different aspects of your life before next class in each of the ways listed in the handout, picking a, a different anticipated pleasure for each method. The challenge here is not to dream up new pleasures in which to engage, although that's always fun and a creative exercise. This, however, is to see how you're willing to savor aspects of your current life through basking, taking time to let enjoyment sink in, giving thanks, expressing gratitude, marveling, 
enhancing the wonder of even the simplest of pleasures, and luxuriating, consciously orchestrating pleasurable circumstances. Now, pick a different aspect of your life for each of these four. And note that the activities that we outline for ourselves here on handout two of this class may or may not overlap with the goals we set for ourselves on handout one, but they most certainly should reinforce each other. Stop the video if possible and complete this exercise. Gratifications. The next level on our pyramid of personal happiness involves the satisfactions derived from sharing one's value with the world and having it acknowledged and reciprocated. Seligman calls these gratifications, which are part and parcel of right action, cannot be derived from bodily pleasure, nor is it a state that can be chemically induced or attained by any shortcuts. It can only be had by activity consonant with noble purpose. It is the total absorption, the suspension of consciousness, and the flow that gratifications produce that defines liking these activities, not the presence of pleasure. The pleasures are about the senses and emotions. The gratifications, in contrast, are about enacting personal strengths and virtues. He further notes that some of your strengths are tonic, and some are phasic. Kindness, curiosity, loyalty, and spirituality, for example, tend to be tonic. You can display these several times a day. Perseverance, perspective, fairness, and valor on the other extreme tend to be phasic. You cannot demonstrate valor by standing in the checkout line at the grocery store or sitting in an airplane. Well, unless terrorists hijack it. One phasic action in a lifetime may be enough to demonstrate valor. You'll now select strengths that are deeply characteristic of you. These are your signature strengths. False humility will not suffice here. You must be honest about these strengths. I do not believe that you should devote overly much effort to correcting your weaknesses, Seligman says. Rather, I believe that the highest success in living and deepest emotional satisfaction comes out of building and using your signature strengths. The, quotes pleasant life might be had by drinking champagne and driving a Porsche, but the good life is using your signature strengths every day to produce authentic happiness and abundant gratification. This is something that you can learn to do in each of the main realms of your life, work, love, and raising children. Now take class eight, handout two, pleasures and gratifications, and complete section two, gratifications. Select three of your signature strengths. For example, kindness, curiosity, loyalty, spirituality, perseverance, perspective, fairness, valor, and write in A, an acknowledgement of how you have created satisfaction with it in your life, and B, how you're willing to create more satisfaction with it before next class. Complete A and B for your signature strengths one, two, and three. Stop the video if possible to complete this exercise. Defining and living your purpose. The apex or the third level of the pyramid of personal happiness is the rewarding experience derived from embracing your purpose and living your mission. To find this is not to have to travel to the far reaches of the earth and seek the guru in the mountain cave. It involves delving into your own soul and finding the stirrings within your own heart. It's your covenant with the divine you came into this lifetime to fulfill. As Yahshua in Love Without End shares, your true covenant is encoded in the patterns of alignment you originally knew with God. Your being is not evolving into something other than your own intrinsic nature. You have an opportunity to examine and assimilate 
all the varieties of experience through the beingness you put on and wear for a while like clothing. Though through involvement with other beings in life, your reason for living is expanded. This is your history. And history is real insofar as it is the repository of experience. You would, however, be operating under a very strained illusion to believe that your personal history is the cause of who you are. This is why a person can reveal himself in the quickness of a heartbeat to be quite different than his personal history might suggest. Such startling manifestations are most likely to occur in the presence of rekindled purpose or the restoration of one's true state of love. One's true being is now. We will engage in an exercise that I've done many times in my life, and perhaps some of you have also. Nevertheless, every time I do it, although the words are different, the spirit and the feel of it deepens, giving me reinforced certitude in my inner guidance and trust in my path. Even though the details, characters, and directions may change from day to day, it's never boring, always full of surprises and new challenges and emotional peaks and valleys. We're going to write a statement of purpose for our life. Even though the words are not our purpose, we can use words infused with our spirit to approximate the feeling that our true purpose inspires in us. It's important that each person uses his or her own words and feelings to make his or her unique statement. Statement of Purpose. Take Class 8, Handout 3, Statement of Purpose. A way to define your life purpose is as follows. List your signature strengths, ones that you perhaps have already listed in the former exercise, enthusiasm, creativity, humor, etc. Then in B, List the ways you enjoy expressing those qualities in interacting with others. For example, by teaching, supporting, empowering, exciting, playing with. Then, C. Describe the way you would like to see everyone in the universe interacting with everyone else. Now, this is a statement describing an ultimate condition, the perfection of the universe in your terms brought about by using your unique qualities. It's meant to be idealistic. Don't think of it as, oh, it can never be achieved. This is what you would love to see happen, your heart's desire. Then, in D, the artistry comes in. You combine the three prior subdivisions into a single statement. This statement should be idealistic. It's an ideal to which you aspire and gives meaning to your life, even though doubts and fears arise along the way. For example, my purpose is to use my, here's where you list your signature strengths, creativity, inquisitiveness, and optimism. Two, here's where you list the ways you enjoy sharing them. Support and teach others to express their talents so that, and here is the ideal result, everyone continuously experiences a life of joy, grounded in love and service to others. Stop the video, if possible, and complete this exercise now. This statement of purpose is the umbrella under which all your life goals fit. It can be used as a yardstick to measure prospective competing goals that you're considering. Hold each goal up to your statement of purpose and see which fits best for you and present. Your heart will help direct you when your mind gets mired in confusion of ego desires. I recommend redoing this statement of purpose exercise at least once a year. Even though the words you use, the core of it strengthens. It continues to deepen my gratitude for life and for the wonder and joy of my life journey in it. I suggest you put your statement of purpose somewhere prominent where you can see it often. 
I also suggest you share it with supported people in your life and assist them to write theirs if they're open to it. As I live a purposeful existence more and more each day, my pleasures and gratifications are blended in greater harmony. As has been noted, every inhale and exhale can become more easy, effortless, and pleasurable. But not always. Living my purpose is not always sensuously pleasurable or even immediately gratifying. Yet part of me knows it's my highest path that leads to my greatest fulfillment. The fulfillment is not an end state, but a process that becomes second nature to me. Quieting my mind, listening to my guidance, taking the steps to which I am directed on my path, and trusting the support of the universe, whether I'm stretching beyond what I believed I could do or basking in the sense of completing a challenge. This is what takes me and us beyond the, quotes, crisis of leisure to where our work and play become a harmonious flow, full of surprises and challenges, stretches and joys, into realms yet to be imagined, yet savored every moment. I invite us to join hands and hearts and walk through the veil of survival illusion into the realm of shared abundance, loving support, and extraordinary co-creativity. We embodied at this time to herald in this new paradigm of being on our planet. Each of us must practice alone and take responsibility for prioritizing in our pyramid of happiness and at the same time shed the illusion of separation and know that my success is yours and yours is mine as brothers and sisters in source. Holding you in my heart as fellow travelers on the road home, I send and receive blessings for our circle and all sentient beings till next class. Blessings in light and love. <laughs>